and welcome to episode 35 of my doll's house diary. Now my next aim with the doll's house is to get all of the rest of the rooms decorated so that I can get the doors back on and then concentrate on the furniture and miniature tutorials. So what I want to do today is show you my design ideas for each of the remaining rooms and then we'll get started on the decorating. So I'm starting off with the inspiration photograph for the bedroom and this will be the main bedroom in the house. And I think I may have shown you this photograph before. So although I won't be copying this exactly, this is just an idea of the sort of colour scheme that I want. Really light and airy and modern looking. And again, as with the guest bedroom, I want to do one wall in wallpaper. So I'm going to try and choose a design for that today as well. And then here I've got, obviously this is a, a Christmas scene, which I won't be doing, but again, just an idea for the actual colour scheme of the dining room. And I really like that lovely, light, elegant look. Got the damask wallpaper there, which I really like as well. And I'll be able to reuse one of my marble fireplace surrounds. But really love that table and chairs, and we'll have a sideboard in there as well. And also want some sort of display cabinet so that we can get some nice china pieces in there. And then I've got a couple of photographs here for the living room. Now this is perhaps a little bit too cluttered so I don't want to have as much in there as in this photograph but I really like that colour scheme and my idea for the living room was always a sort of log cabin effect. So lots of sort of dark wood furniture and red checks lots of rugs and lots of throws and I want to do a little log burner in the fireplace as well. So like I say these these photographs are really just sort of inspiration photographs just to give me or sort of keep me on track for the theme of each of the rooms so not necessarily just going to copy them completely. There's another one for the living room there which I really like. A big old comfy cushion next to the log burner, a cup of hot chocolate on a tray so that's the sort of style I'll be going for. So I'm going to make a start with the ceilings in each of the three rooms and I'm so glad now that I applied the lining paper all at the same time so I haven't got that job to do today. And I'm going to be using the North Pole white paint and I've got these two sort of half pots and then I've got one more pot in my cabinet in the other room so that should be enough. And I've got a smaller brush here to go around the edges of the ceiling and then I've got a larger brush for the central area and I will be having obviously the coving in each of the rooms so I don't need to go right up to the edge. Okay let's get started. I've also just put a little bit of painter's tape over the um, eyelets in the centre there so that I don't splash any paint into them. So that's those three ceilings now done and again where the um, copper wire runs beneath the paper you can see a bit of a bubble but once the paint dries that tends to shrink back and it also helps if you have a light or a flashlight or a torch when you're doing it and that way you can see where you've been when you're sort of painting in a confined area it's sometimes difficult to see if you've left any patches I'm not putting the light on just because the camera goes out of focus when I do, so <laughs> I'll just tell you about that. And what I want to do now is fill around the coving in the little back landing. And you've probably seen me use this filler before. And it's this Ron Seal Smooth Finish Filler and it's really fine and really good for using for small gaps. And I've got a glue spreader here, which I'm going to use to work it into the gaps. So I'm just going to work that into that gap along the top of the cove in there. And I really like this one because it goes in really easy. And you don't have all that sort of sanding to do afterwards because it's so fine. So that's the fill-in done there around the coving and I put a little bit underneath as well on this right hand side because there was quite a bit of gap in there 
and I've also just touched up in a couple of places around the skirting board. So I'm now going to leave that to dry. Once that's dried I'll just give it a gentle sand but as I said earlier you don't need to do a lot of sanding on that because it's so fine it just tends to go where you want it to go. And then I can repaint the coving and skirting. I'll put another coat of paint on the ceiling and then I can also do the walls. So what I actually want to do now is come back into the main bedroom, start off in here. And for the walls in actually each of the three remaining rooms, I'm going to use this natural calico and that will go with all of the sort of decor that I've got in mind. And that's just a really nice sort of pale creamy beige colour. And there's only a little tiny bit left in this tin which we actually used in our living room so I'm going to use that up and then I have actually got another couple of sample pots and they're the ones with, just reach those, the little rollers on but actually I find that the little rollers don't work very well. They're, they're okay if you are just using it as a sample on a wall in your house but then they don't give a very good finish in your doll's house so I tend just to pop the top off and then you can just get your brush in there. So I might not need to use those yet, I might have enough left in the tin, but we'll see. And Matt's actually found me out this nicer paintbrush as well, which will make it easier. Now in this room I'm going to have one wall of patterned wallpaper, but I'm not sure where to put that yet. I don't know whether I'll have it on the back so that it's sort of a nice backdrop to the wardrobe, or have it along this window wall so it will sort of be at the back of the bed. Probably have it along this longer wall, but until I've decided I'm going to do the natural calico all the way around. I really like this colour, this lovely sort of creamy beige. And it's darker than the colour I'll be using for the furniture, so that will stand out nicely against it as well. So that's all of those rooms now painted on the walls and the ceilings. Let's come down here and into the main bedroom. And I've put the bed back in there. Painted all through the back there and the ceiling as well. And the same in the living room and in the dining room and I've put all these bits back in just because it's a good place to store them for now. But what I want to do now is create cardboard templates for the floors in these three rooms and then attach the stripwood flooring and I'll sort of zoom through that process because I've shown you how to do that in a couple of the other rooms. We've done the um, study here in the same way and also the guest bedroom so I'll be doing that again for these three rooms but I haven't quite decided on the colours yet but I'll just get the wood strips stuck into place for now and get those dry fitted and then I'll go back and have a look at the images that I saved and see what colour the flooring is in those and if that would work in the doll's house. So I've created the cardboard templates for each of those rooms and as I said I'm not going to go into great detail on these but just to say when you're creating your template don't overlap your card as you'll end up with a little lump in your flooring. So I've just stuck two pieces together there using masking tape to the size of the room and I always leave about a millimetre border around the edges just so that when you come to put it back in when it's actually got the wood strips on it you're not going to struggle to get that back in and these are really easy because I obviously haven't got any um, door surrounds in the way because I haven't made those yet and I haven't got the um, chimney breasts there either I'll be building the chimney breast for the dining room and for the living room and then in the bedroom I will be reusing the old chimney breast to keep it uniform with the guest bedroom so I want that same thickness in there 
So this, this even with the card is quite tight, so I'll probably have to take a bit off of there, but that's fine. I can just sand some off of there once the flooring's in. A little bit at the top there, so I probably only have to take off about a millimetre or so, which I can do by sanding, but we'll get onto that later. And then in the other rooms, I want the chimney breast in the living room there to be the same thickness as the one in the study and the same with the kitchen and the dining room and that way they, they just go up nicely so it's a little bit narrower and then narrower still in the upper rooms and you will sometimes find that with chimney breasts that they do sort of go narrower as they go up and I think that will look quite nice. So what I want to do now is actually start separating my wooden flooring sheet into strips. So I've got here three fresh sheets of wooden flooring strips and I've also got that bag of just a few strips that were left over from the last one that I did. So what I want to do now is just work my way through each of these sheets and split the strips off. So as you probably know they're on a self-adhesive backing which makes it so much easier to actually apply them to your template and you just very carefully cut between the gaps like that and I've obviously said this in other videos but the reason I like to do it this way is because you get more of a gap between the strips and it looks a little bit more random with these they just look like um, lots of long strips all stuck next to each other. You've got the odd broken strip but only sort of very occasionally and I just think it looks more realistic by sort of relaying them yourself and having the shorter strips sort of more frequently as you would in a, a real sort of strip wood flooring. And then when you've got the split one like that you just cut along that as well cutting through the paper really so they're really easy to cut and as always just be careful of your fingers when you're doing something like this always be aware of where your fingers are in relation to your blade okay so that's all of the pieces now cut into strips so I'm now going to go and get my first template and start sticking them back on again <laughs> So I've got here my bedroom floor template and I've started off with one long strip along that edge. Now this is my front edge and I always like to make sure that I've got a really neat edge along the front and then if it's slightly out along the back that's okay because that will then be covered with the skirting board and obviously not as visible as this front open edge of the doll's house. So I've then just stuck a sort of half strip on there and then I just continue from there. So I line up my next strip and then I use my craft knife just to make a little mark at the end there along the edge of the template and then I use my guillotine to cut that and again they cut really easily as well like that. and then that piece that I've cut off will become my next strip and then I'll just carry on like that until the whole template is covered and I just leave a little sort of hair's width gap between each strip. Okay so that's the bedroom floor now done and I'm really pleased with the fit of that. So before I move on to the next um, floor, the, I've taken the template in there for the living room already. I just want to get the main doors of the doll's house back on. So obviously I've still got the skirting and coving to do in all of the rooms but having the doors on won't sort of hinder me from getting in there to do that. It was really just the painting I wanted to do before I put the doors back on. And I've got the doors here and I've given them a bit of a clean but where they've sort of been standing around they are getting a little bit knocked and I'll have some extra sort of bit of painting to do and everything on the stonework. So I really want to get them back on to keep them in good condition. So I'll go and get my screwdriver and get those back on. So the 
doors are back on and it's really good to see it all in one piece again and the rooms inside are also a little bit more protected with those doors on so there's not so much dust getting inside. Now a couple of the doors are a little bit stiff so we've got a little bit of adjusting to do and I think that may be from where I had them stood near the radiator in my craft room and maybe they've sort of warped a little bit and they are just a little bit tight but it's not too much of a problem I'll be able to sort that out. That one opens out like that. A little bit squeaky on the hinge there, but this is the one that is a little bit tight. And it's, it, I've got a gap in there, but it's quite tight up here. So it's almost as if the doll's house isn't sitting quite straight. So it may just be a case of having to put a little bit of spare wood in underneath the doll's house to, to level it up. And then the door should open more easily. So it's just sticking at the top here. And then that one opens like that. So I also managed to get the living room flooring done. So that's there as well. So I'm going to now finish off the dining room flooring. And then I want to have a look online for some wallpaper for the main bedroom. So that's the dining room flooring sheet covered as well. And already that looks so much better. And I also found a nice wallpaper for the main bedroom. And this is called Magnolia Grove. And it's a Laura Ashley wallpaper. And I just found a square of it on Google Images. And then used Adobe Photoshop to create an A4 sheet. And again, I've explained that in another video. I think it was one of the craft room videos where I did the bird wallpaper. I copied the one that I've actually got in my full size craft room. And I show how I actually lay all of, the, all of that together to create one single sheet. Now, if I, I'm gonna have it along the back wall there, and then I'm going to also cover the chimney breast. And I want it along that back wall because I'm going to have a lovely big wardrobe along the back and the wardrobe will be cream so I don't want it to just blend in with the colour of the paint. Now obviously the, the largest I can print with my printer is A4 and you also get a border around it. So that will go there like that and then I've got here a piece of my skirting board. I can't actually do it with one hand, I should have put the camera on, on a tripod, but if I put my coving at the top and the skirting board at the bottom, that just covers the top and bottom of the paper. And I'll have to be really careful because it really is a question of getting the coving just along that line, that border there at the top of the paper. Oh, it's a little bit dark in there as well for you to see at the moment, but that will work. And the same thing again on the chimney breast because obviously I'll have the skirting and the coving around the edges of that as well. But yeah, let me bring that out. I really, really like that pattern. And again, it's called Magnolia Grove and they do it in a lovely um, blue, a sage green and there's a grey as well if that would sort of suit your colour scheme a little bit more. But I've saved this file on my computer and what I'll also do as well is print some off onto fabric and then I can incorporate some of that into the bedding. So before I fit the wallpaper I just want to add some paint to the flooring. So I've got here the natural calico which is the paint that I've used for the walls but there was just a little bit left in the bottom so I've added a bit of water. I don't know if you can see there how sort of sloshy it is. And I really just want to add a wash to the floorboards. So I've also got here some um, kitchen towel just torn off so I can get to it quickly. So I'm going to add some paint and then wipe it off with the kitchen towel so that it really is just a sort of faint or light coat of paint. So let's have a go. So I've got my nice one inch brush here as well. So I can get lots on at once. So I want to really sort of spread it out. I've got my plastic um, tablecloth here protecting my work surface.
and then I'm going to bring in the kitchen towel and just wipe that over the top. And that does actually give it a really nice colour. So I'm taking away the sort of colour of the natural wood, but just really adding that light wash on there, which is going to go really nicely with the wallpaper and with all the sort of pale coloured furniture that I'm going to have in there. Let's do the next section. Mm. I like that. So with the sort of random colours of the floorboards underneath as well, that's given a really nice effect. If you want the colour a little bit heavier, you can just apply another coat. But just do it in thin coats so you can sort of get an idea of how it's going to look. I quite like that. I don't want to go too mad with it. I don't want it to look like a painted floor. I just wanted it to have that sort of whitewash sort of look. And then what I'll do once this is completely dry is I'll just give it a very, very light sand and then I can add in my nail holes just to finish the piece off. My flooring is now completely dry and I've been over that with a piece of 500 grade sandpaper and I'm really pleased with the colouring of that. So now I just want to put the finishing touches to it with my scribe tool and just add some nail holes at each end of each wood strip. And again, this is something I always do with my flooring. And it's just that extra little detail that really adds some realism to the piece. So this is now ready to be glued into place. To glue the flooring into place I begin by applying my Gorilla Wood glue directly to the floor of the doll's house. I then use a brush to spread out the glue evenly all across the floor and I keep this brush for glue only because they do tend to get a little bit hard. To get the floor into place sometimes you just need to bend it just to fit it into the room and then give it a good press down. I then covered the floor with kitchen towel and that's just to protect it. Put a couple of sheets in there. And then I use these ceramic tiles which I place in the corners and then when you come to weigh down your flooring the weight is evenly distributed over the whole floor. But I'm just placing them a little bit further back from the front edge so that I can fit some clips along there to really hold that front edge down. I'm then weighing the floor down with some books. And I fit in there as many as I can. And then it can be left to dry. So I'm going to be using the chimney breast that was in the old bedroom. And for this, I cut it from an old shelving unit. And this is just a piece of MDF which I cut to size and then cut out the opening for the actual fire. I'm going to reuse this, but I'm going to be blocking off this hole, as I've said, and I'm going to have the bed actually standing in front of the chimney breast. But I want to clean this up first so that I can repaper it. And I've just got a little bit of skirting board stuck down there. I'm going to try and ease that off with my screwdriver. That's stuck quite tight on there. And then I'm going to pick off what paper I can by hand and then I'll bring in my window cleaner and remove the stubborn bits with that. And I find that that works really well, just a cheap window cleaner. Or you could use vinegar and water. And I know a lot of you have lots of other sort of potions and things that you like to use. I 
I want to get this completely smooth and then I'll put some lining paper on before I apply the new real paper. So I've removed as much of the paper I can just by sort of picking it off by hand and I didn't manage to get that much off really. So what I'm going to do now is use my scraper and I'm going to use this window and glass cleaner. It's just a Tesco's own make, cheap and cheerful, but it really does do the trick. And I'm sure you've all got your own little sort of potions that you like to use. But I find this works quite well. I'm going to spray a bit on, get it nice and wet. And if you let that just soak in for a little bit, just for a minute or so, it tends to work a little bit better. Okay, so let's have a go. Yeah, it comes off nice and easily with that. And to protect your surface, I've got an old plastic tablecloth here. So it can get quite messy. about as clean as I can get it now and I'm not going to spend too much time on these sort of inside areas because I'm going to be covering that or fill in that opening so that we've just got a nice straight chimney breast there so because the MDF is quite porous this has soaked in a lot of the glass cleaner so I'm going to go and stand this by the radiator now to completely dry off and then I can just flick off these sort of last little bits of paper that are left and then clean this space up and then what I want to do with this is use lining paper to create a nice smooth surface all the way around and then I'm going to put the wallpaper over the top of that. So before I put the lining paper over this whole thing I just want to fill out this opening. So what I've got here is a piece of three millimeter one eighth of an inch balsa wood and although I don't recommend balsa wood for actually making the furniture I do like it for little jobs like this because it's so easy to cut and I'm going to turn that that way around so that I'm copying the line from the front of the opening. So I'm lining it up along a side and along the top which is actually square but I haven't actually cut the whole thing square so what I'll do is I'll just draw the line down there and then make my cut and when I actually used this as a chimney breast in the room it didn't matter too much because then over the front I actually put the, the surround which covered this hole, it was actually a nice little art shape so it didn't matter that I hadn't cut it exactly square if you're also sort of ever doing this sort of thing for your own house so that's that and then I can just cut that out using my knife I'm going to use my ruler as well to get that as straight as possible and then what I want to do is just glue it into place And 3mm of B she or basswood would be more difficult than that to cut. As you can see there, just three sweeps of the knife and I'm through. So that's why I, I quite like balsa wood for this sort of thing. And then I'm going to go along there. And it's even easier to cut along the grain. <laughs> One sweep of the knife there. So let's try that into place. It really should just slide in like that but if you need to make any little cuts then obviously do so like I just need to take a little bit off along that slanted edge there I'm just going to do that freehand because then what I can also do is just use a little bit of filler to get it exact and so that there's no ridges showing and again because this wood isn't sort of nice and smooth it's slightly lower on one side at the top there but that's not a bad fit but I just also need to take a little bit off the bottom there so that it runs straight so just make a little mark with your pencil there to either side of your chimney breast and then again trim that off using your wool 
Um, I'm going to have the bed standing in front of the chimney rest as well. So if there are any little ridges showing from this then they'll be hidden. Yep, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to glue that into place. So I've got that face down now, so I'm just going to put a bit of glue around the outside edge of this and then slide that into place. Get it in like that so I don't just wipe all of the glue off. And push it down. Make sure both bits are flat against your work surface. Push it up into the opening as well. Like that. Okay, so a bit of gap in around the edge, but I'm going to leave that to dry now, and then I'll use a bit of filler on that, that nice fine wood filler, which I can sand nice and smooth, and then we can get the lining paper on. The glue has now completely dried, so I just want to work a little bit of um, wood filler into the cracks there. And you probably know by now, but I really like this Ron Seal Smooth Finish Filler. And it works really well for miniature work. So let me just put a little bit around the outside of the balsa wood. And I really like this one because it works in nicely and you don't have to do too much sanding once it's dry. that's going into the cracks there. Okay so that's plenty there and already that's given a really lovely smooth finish but when that's dry I shall give it a very gentle sand and then I'll be ready to add the lining paper. So I left this drying overnight so the wood filler is now completely dry and then I've just been over this morning and gave it a very gentle sand using a piece of 500 grade sandpaper. So I'm now ready to attach the lining paper and I'm just using the lining paper to really smooth off the surface, give me a nice flat surface, smooth off these edges which are quite porous and it gives me a nicer surface then to attach my wallpaper to which I'm just using normal printer paper for and whenever I mention lining paper I get a lot of questions asking what it actually is and where you can get it from well here in the UK it's it's quite popular you can just get it from any sort of DIY store I think it may be called something different in America but I think there is a brand called Wall Doctor who do a lining paper. But really what it is, is just a sort of quite thick um, paper. And you could use paper from a sketchbook if you've got something like that. And it really is just to cover the surface of the wall to give you a smoother surface. So I'm going to apply my glue directly to the front of the chimney breast and I've got this piece of card here because then when I turn it over I don't want the paper to get any dirt on it from my cutting mat. Bit of a block nozzle there. I'll just put a bit on like that. I've got my glue spreader here so spread that out. Make sure you're covering the entire surface and get in all the way along the edges. And I've just cut the lining paper so it's the exact same height as my chimney breast. I don't need to overlap it at the top or bottom. And then I've also cut a little bit extra just to wrap around the sides and just go onto the back. And just lay that on. And then smooth it into place. I need to come up that side a bit. I've also got this little sort of foam sponge here that I just like to press it into place with. But you can just use your hands or you can use a piece of kitchen towel. 
apply glue now to the actual paper and then just curl those edges around. Just do one side at a time so it doesn't dry out. So curl that round, keeping a nice sharp line along the corner there. And then onto the back like that. And this paper is nice and tough so you can be quite tough with it. Sort of stretch it round there. Like that. And then the final side. So I'm now going to prop that against the radiator again to dry off. And once that's completely dry, I shall attach my wallpaper. So my chimney breast has now dried and I'm ready to attach my piece of wallpaper. Now, as I explained earlier, because I'm printing this on an A4 sheet of paper and obviously my walls are taller than that, I'm going to have to be really careful when I attach it so that I'm not going to be able to see any of the white border below the coving or above the skirting. So I've got a piece of each here and I've lined it up so that that bit is hidden and then I've just drawn a pencil line along the top and bottom of the chimney breast so that I know where to put my glue and where to then line up the paper and the same down here with the skirting that border is just hidden and it really is just a hair's width that I've got left at each end so that worked out quite well so I'm going to again apply the glue to the front of the chimney breast between my pencil lines and then spread that out piece of card again and then what I'm actually going to do this time is go over with a brush just to get rid of some of those ridges in the glue just to sort of prevent any of them showing through my paper just because it's a lot thinner than the lining paper like that, pop that over there and now very carefully attach the paper so that I've got an even overhang at each side and just make sure before you actually let it touch the glue that you've got it the right way around as well if you've got a sort of top and bottom Bring back in my sponge now and smooth that into place. Like that. And then I'm going to turn that over. In fact, I'm going to get rid of this piece of card because I've spilt some glue down there. I don't want to get that on the wallpaper at the front. Fresh piece of card. And I can lay that face down. And I want to wrap these around first to make a nice neat crease. And then I'm just going to trim a little bit off at each side so that it's not overhanging the cut out there. those around. Okay so once again I'll leave that to dry and then this piece can be fixed into place. So I've applied the glue directly to the back of the chimney breast. I'll spread this out and then I'll take it to the doll's house and glue it into place. So I've got a piece of kitchen towel here and also a cocktail stick to remove any glue that comes out on this side. And I just want that to go where it would have originally sat like that what's that there? <laughs> bit of the old paper coming off I think 
and then just press it into place giving it a really good hard press because there's not really any way of securing this I don't want obviously to use masking tape because I don't want to damage the paper so I'm just going to give that a firm press and then there's just a little bit of glue seeping out on this side so press it as hard as you can and then you can get any sort of excess glue careful when you're doing that not to sort of tear your paper okay so I'm gonna hold on to that for a little while and then once that's dried I can begin cutting the skirting and coving so I've cut the skirting and the coving for the bedroom and I haven't done this in detail because I've done videos before on how to cut the skirting and coving with the correct mitre joins and I'll remember to link to that at the end of this video and again what I've done is just number these on the back um, clockwise going around the room so one two three four and so on just so that when I take them away to paint I know where they go back and I've done the same with the coving which is there and then let me just show you what I've done around the door here because I haven't made obviously made the door frame or the door yet I've just stuck a couple of pieces of three millimeter thick strip along the inside edge of the door opening and that's what I'll be using for the um, sort of door surround and then I'm using this same skirting for the surround actually around the outside edge of the door but I needed to know how far over it over the opening it overlapped if you see what I mean so that's why I've put the strip there and then I've just put a little bit of the skirting at either side there so that I then knew how wide I needed to cut these little bits of skirting so that little tiny bit there which I'm going to pop into the room because I keep dropping it and then obviously coming along that longer wall there so all of those pieces are now exact so I'm going to paint these now and then I shall be fitting them into place to make the pieces easier to paint I've just attached them to a painting sheet here using masking tape and when you're painting just make sure you get along the top edges of your skirting and along the sort of top and bottom edges of your coving as well which will be visible obviously once they're in place so each of these pieces have now had two coats of paint and i sanded gently after each coat had dried so these are now ready to be fitted so that's the skirting board fitted into place and I've just got a few little gaps there that I'm going to need to fill and that's mainly where the um, mitre joins don't fit exactly in some of the corners there but I'll wait until the glue has completely dried before I do that and then I can fill and then just do a second coat of paint on those pieces so now onto the coving and there's the coving as well and again quite a few gaps I need to fill this time and this particular coving that I'm using isn't an exact angle so isn't an exact 45 degree angle so if I show you from the edge there try and get the light right see how it sits forward more from the wall so because of that I always try and angle it up towards the ceiling because I find that the gap in underneath it doesn't look as bad as if the gap runs along the ceiling but where I've sort of tried to force it into position it has still created some gaps around the ceiling you can see along the back and in that back corner there but it's all things that can be filled and then painted over again but as the glue is still wet at this time I'll wait until that's completely dried and I'll do that before I record the next episode and then I can just update you on that and again I didn't go into great detail with the fitting just because I've done that in detail in previous videos which you can look back on but yeah pretty pleased with how that room's looking so far okay so that's it for this episode 
In the next episode I'm going to be finishing off the decorating in the living room and the dining room but I'll probably throw in a few tutorials in between. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care, bye! Thank you.